Hello everyone, I am Ujwal Shankar. I secured an AIR of 11 in JE Advanced 2023. I am from Bangalore, born and brought up. And today in this special class, I would like to share with you uh, some stories about my two-year journey and other tips and strategies on how to deal with stress. I first got introduced to JE and IIT and other related information in 10th. And the first thing I did was to seek counsel before I made a decision on whether I wanted to pursue JE or not. I feel like this, this was a very important step by asking friends, peers and other people who have gone through the same process as it gives you an insight of what the experience is like so that it avoids any regrets which you might have once you actually go into the journey almost blind. Taking in inputs from various sources ultimately led me to make my choice to pursue JE and ultimately pursue engineering as a career. In the beginning, I was honestly not sure whether to pursue engineering or medical because my family members, my parents and my sister, all, all of them are doctors. But I was not sure I wanted to pursue JE until I actually got into the whole process of learning physics, chemistry and maths. And once I knew I was really interested in these three subjects, I never looked back. My first ever mock test was actually pretty easy because it was about dimensional analysis in physics. So I used to think like, what is, what is there so difficult in JE Advanced, right? Like I hadn't heard about all the stories and actually seen the papers as of then. So, but then in the following weeks, I actually found out the bitter truth. So in 11th, I actually had a pretty shaky start. I used to average around 10 to 15% in all my mock tests, uh, but I did not let that discourage me. I think it's very important to approach people who are better at something which you do, which you want to be better at yourself. That's why I ended up finding peers and friends who are, who are better at me at, in particular subjects or topics and ended up taking their help and in turn helped them in where they were weak. This helped all of us grow together and made the whole process of learning a bit more engaging and fun and less monotonous. So having a good friend circle around you and having a good circle of people in general around you, I think is very useful and very helpful while going through such an arduous journey. Having good mentors and having good teachers is extremely crucial because they're the artists who paint on the black, blank canvas that is you initially before you have any ideas of what to do on your own. I would suggest never hesitate to ask your teachers for doubts. Don't hold yourself back even if it's a very silly question. Ultimately, you're doing it for your own benefit and you shouldn't hold yourself back. Even though I started somewhere near the bottom of the class in 11th, I did not let that discourage me. Once I got into the process of learning physics, chemistry and maths at the JE level and I found out that I'm actually passionate about these, these subjects and uh, exploring more in the realm of science, I was able to go through the journey even through the highs and lows. My initial performances in the mock test were poor and in the beginning it actually used to stress me out a lot. I kept comparing myself to others who used to do better than me and I was regretting the fact that I had not started earlier. I used to overthink about the results of internal exams and I realized how big of a mistake this was because I realized that the only intention we're writing these mock tests is to get as much practice as possible and the only output you should take from this is the errors you made and how to rectify them. That is a very important aspect which many people or many aspirants tend to forget about because they just write mock papers and they leave it at that. It's probably lying somewhere in the corner of their house. But actually going through the paper once again, figuring out which questions you made mistakes in and rectifying them is very, very crucial to your growth throughout the two years. I used to make a lot of silly mistakes during calculations. Somehow, like three, three times two is six, right? But somehow in the like in the rush of the exam, three times two becomes three plus two and I write it down as five. And next thing you know, my answer is very far away from any of the four options. So I also started to keep track of the number of silly mistakes I used to make every exam. And my goal with every new one was to make, was to reduce the number of silly mistakes I was making. In the limited span of two years, we cannot go through an infinite number of questions. But whatever questions we do go through or we do come across, we need to make sure that we leave it 
with complete conceptual clarity and no doubts. That's why analyzing your errors is the way to go. Over the next few months, I kept with the process and kept trying to do my best and slowly but surely, I did start to see a few imp improvements. The thing is, improvements and changes don't come in a, in a matter of a few days. It takes months for, your, for the results of your hard work to show. The key is consistency. Try to view these two years not as you being burdened by exams or not as you doing a job, but instead try to actually get involved in the concepts and try to find something which you're truly interested in because that will help you keep going when you're not when your performance is not that good the key to consistency is loving what you do and doing what you love once you find something which you're truly interested in and you're passionate about the whole process becomes that much easier as you stick with the process you'll slowly start noticing changes and improvements and doing this for two years consistently is what led me to where I am today. Of course, there were many hiccups on the way. For one, I was hospitalized for a week because of pneumonia, but I didn't let that incident stop me. It's ultimately what you decide to do with the situation you're given in. The thing is, everyone can complain, but only a few people actually step up and, and strive to make a change. Even my JE mains experience was not such an incredible one. By the time I reached the end of 12th and after all the revision phases, uh, I had gradually built up the reputation of being a good and consistent performer. And at this time, I was averaging around 80 to 90 percent, or like 70 to 80 percent in JE advanced examinations. JE mains was the first big competitive exam that I attempted in my life. I struggled a lot with dealing with people's expectations, especially my teachers and my parents. Some people expected 100 percentile from me, some people expected a perfect score of 300. And thinking about all these things and thinking about my own expectations for myself, I ended up uh, putting myself under a lot of pressure and tension. And this is why I ended up not performing in JE mains in, bo in both the attempts. This is something which I learned and improved upon during my JE Advanced attempt. The few days leading up to JE Advanced, my, my priority was to keep myself calm and collected because I knew that doing, learning something new and, and preparing more and more would do very little to improve my chances of, uh, of doing well in the last, in the last two, three days. Even the, even the morning before JE Advanced, I was relaxed and I went in with a fresh mind. Instead of, in, instead of getting distracted with all these negative thoughts as I had done with JE mains, this time, once I sat down in my seat, the only thing which existed was the computer, the paper, and me. That sort of tunnel vision helped me maintain my focus and prevented me from having unnecessary thoughts. After my first paper, I came out satisfied with my performance. I'd suggest not to discuss the paper with anyone because it might lead to unwanted stress. Instead, I'd say have lunch and take some well-deserved rest and prepare yourself mentally for the second paper. Do not let paper one affect your performance in paper two because there are two extremely contrasting cases which you want to avoid. I know, I know a few people who have done very bad in paper one but didn't let that demotivate them and covered, and covered up the bad performance in a, with a very good one in paper two. On the other hand, I know people who have done very well in paper one, gotten overconfident and that led them to mess up paper two. So I'd strongly suggest, do not even think about paper one after you're done with it, but instead focus on paper two. Think of it as a completely new exam and attempt it with a fresh and clear mind. So now I would like to just give some general tips. Usually your coaching institute or your, the mock papers which you write, they help you improve in terms of knowledge, in terms of how, how many questions you can solve in a given amount of time, in terms of the difficulty of the questions which you can solve. Many people rarely address the emotional or the mental side of giving these exams. Because think about it, you don't want to prepare for two years, but then end up getting nervous and ruining your performance on the final day and end up regretting spending so much time on these exams. Even if people do not emphasize about it, this is a thing which every aspirant needs to think about and should start 
building a defense or an armor around them for i remember before my jea paper the constant thought which was running through my mind is that i did not want to mess it up like jea mains and ultimately i wanted to perform well because i didn't want to have any regrets in the past 2 years i wanted all the blood sweat and tears i put into my preparation for the past 2 years to be worth something to be justified this thought kept me going for 2 years but i'd suggest it's better to have a positive reaffirm- reaffirmation for your consistency than a negative one because a negative one will end up failing when it matters most on the last day when you're giving the paper so it is very essential to learn how to deal with this stress as well another thing i want to emphasize on is time management both during the exam and during your preparation as well something like je will take up a lot of sacrifice you will end up missing family gatherings maybe meeting your friends going out for parties and things like that but you need to think for yourself is 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 the end result something which you really want and how badly do you want that how much effort are you willing to put to achieve your goal do you think do you think it'll be worth it at the end that's something which you have to think about and decide for yourself because no matter how much other people will push you towards doing something unless you actually want to do it and you you're actually interested and passionate about it the motivation or the drive will not last for a long time time management is all about doing the right thing at the right time i know many students who don't listen properly in class but but think it's a better idea to go back home and study on their own because they think they'll be more efficient and quicker but if you think about it you're spending twice the amount of time for the same output it's much better to listen in class because that's 90% of the work done there itself after that you'll have to put lesser effort later on while solving questions and trying to improve your concepts further than if you hadn't listened in class and that way you'll end up saving a lot of time as well and thus you can allocate more time to to concept which you are weaker in or to solve more and more questions because we all know that practice the more and more you practice the better it is for an exam like je where application of concepts is the major component even while writing the exam time management is equally important i'd suggest starting with a subject which you are relatively comfortable in so that you gain some confidence and whenever you come across a question which is very lengthy or or a question which you don't get an idea on how to solve i'd suggest try it for 2 to 3 minutes but beyond that do not give any more time and keep it for the end because all the questions have more or less the same amount of weightage so you don't want to spend 10 15 minutes on a particular question where instead of that you could have solved two or three easier questions and gotten and gotten twice or thrice the amount of marks you can always come back to the questions you left later when you've done the questions you're sure of such that you don't end up sacrificing your marks that way i'd also suggest trying to prioritize all three subjects equally during your preparation assume my favorite subject is physics and my weaker weakest subject is maths if i completely neglect maths and focus completely on physics during my preparation and in my paper physics is really really hard then i'll end up neither being able to do physics nor maths but during my preparation if i give equal or even work harder for math then even if physics is really hard i don't end up having to rely completely on it and i can solve the easier to moderate questions in math as well it's better to do two or three questions in your weaker subject than do one really hard question in your favorite subject just to prove that you can do it in an exam like je that's why moderation and being uh relatively good in all three subjects is much better and much more desirable than being exceptional in any one so i'd suggest giving equal priorities to all three also try not to think too much about je and get stressed that your whole life depends on it there is there is much more to life than a single exam you have your parents you have your family you have your friends to cherish on there are there are many career opportunities and you just have to find one which is compatible with you 
You do not have to get downtrodden or disheartened just because you did bad in one exam. There are always opportunities which come which come to you in your life. You should just you should just keep your eyes open and be smart enough to latch onto them when you have the chance. So to conclude, uh guys, don't hold yourself back. Don't let your insecurities push you down. Instead, step out of your comfort zone and try to explore as many things as possible. I promise you, you will not regret it. When I look back on these 2 years, there are there's not a single thing which I regret deeply and ultimately all my hard work seems extremely worth it and I am happy where I am right now. So, all the best to you guys and I hope you make your dreams come true. Thank you.